minus 11 in the graph. So Dijkstra's algorithm never works whenever there is a negative wave. So in order to work when we have negative waves, we are making use of Bellman for algorithm. So one of the major advantages, even if we have negative waves, Bellman for algorithm works well and gives the shortest path from a single source. Now let's see how the Bellman Ford algorithm works. The first step in Bellman Ford algorithm is to list down all the edges of the graph. Okay, so if I'm having uh, say five edges, I need to list down all the edges. Then I need to find out how many iterations should my process go. On. If I am having five vertices, my number of iterations will be five minus one, that is four. So first I will be listing out all the edges second one i will be finding out the number of iterations third one is i can start with any vertex okay any vertex as a source and whenever i am selecting a source vertex i will be giving the distance of the source as zero and all other distance to be infinite that's the third step start with an arbitrary vertex assign minimum distance zero to that particular source and all other will be infinite and fourth step is called the relaxation step. What do you mean by relaxation? In each iteration, we have to update the distance of each vertex. So how do you update the distance? I will be calculating the weight of the particular edge plus what is the value that have been assigned to the source or the uh, source to which that node is connected to. So each iteration, we will be finding out the minimum distance and we'll be updating it. This process will be continued and finally when all the iterations are over, we will be ending up with the shortest distance. So this is the basic algorithm of Bellman Ford. So you will understand the algorithm in detail when we are doing a particular example. Okay. So let's see an example like this. Okay. So I am having a directed graph, directed weighted graph. I am having positive weights as well as negative weights. So According to the algorithm, what was our first step? First step was to first step was to put down all the edges. So these are the various edges, starting from A B, A C, A D, B E, C B, C E, D E, D F, E G, and F G. So these are the different edges. What was the second step? I have to find out how many iterations I need to go on. For finding how many iterations, what was the step that we need to do? We have to find out how many vertices and the number of iteration will be vertices minus one. So here I am having seven vertices. So number of iterations will be six. Okay. So I am going for the first iteration in the sixth process. What is the second, third, what was the third step? I need to take a particular source vertex and give it the value zero and all other thing to infinity. So let I am taking A as the source vertex. So I am giving zero to A. And all the other vertex is assigned with the distance value of infinity. Okay. Next step is relaxation. For relaxation, I told you what is the basic steps. So all the data that we are going to get from the graph is um, is being right into the particular table over here. Okay. This is the tabulation method that we have already seen. In the tab in the tabular column, we have a column for vertex. We have a column for distance and for writing down the parent. Okay, so what, what happens is we are listing down all the vertex in that column A to G. The initial source is A, so that is given zero, and the parent is null. We are given for that one. All the other thing is infinity, and the parents are now assigned to be zero. So this is the process. So relaxation starts after taking the first edge. So now we are taking the first edge as A, B. So for updating the weight, I am having a basic formula, distance of u plus w, which is the weight. If it is less than the distance of v, that is the destination node, then we will be updating the distance of the destination equal to distance of u plus w. This you can see here. So whenever we are considering the edge AE, I am having distance of u as zero, w as six, and distance of v as infinity so i am checking 0 plus 6 less than infinity yes yeah, 0 plus 6 is 6 which is less than infinity so what i should do i have to replace the infinity of b by 6 and have to put the particular thing in the tabular column also 
So here I am replacing infinity by 6 and giving the parent of b to be a. Okay, so this is the first step. So here I am taken the edge a b. Now I need to go on and find out the next edge called a c. When you come to a c, again I am having distance of u as 0, w as 5, and distance of v as infinity. So I am again checking 0 plus 5 less than infinity. Yes, it is always less than infinity. So I am reassigning the value of c to be 5. So in the tabular column also you can see I am redefining infinity to 5 and the parent of c to be a. Next I am going to take the next edge a d. In the a d also I am, I am doing the same process 0 plus 5 which is less than infinity. So phi need to be given to the particular vertex phi, uh, vertex d and the parent of d will be a. So that is also being done in the tabular column. Again, I am going for the next vertex that is B E. The B E, you can see that now I am taking the value of 6, which was which we got earlier. 6 minus 1, 6 plus minus 1, which is 5, which is less than infinity. So the value of E will be updated to 5, and the parent of E will be B. Next, I am taking the next edge C B, 5 minus 2, which is less than 6. So that value is also being incorporated to the particular tabular column. Next edge is CE. You can see 5 plus 1 less than 5. So 5 plus 1 is actually 6. 6 is less than 5. That is a false statement. So there is no change in the weight and we are not making any change in the tabular column also. We are going to the next edge DC. When you consider DC, you can see that weight is uh, minus 2 which is 5 so we got 3 is less than 5 so we can update c so and the weight of c so and the parent of c is a so both are being replaced by b and parent b in the tabular column now i have to do the next e d e again we have the same process 5 minus 2 less than e is s and the parent to be D. Next, I'm going to the next edge E G 5 plus 3, which is 8 less than infinity. So I am replacing G infinity by 8 and the parent to be E. So after after this, we're going for F G F G 3 is 7 is less than 8. So the particular value of G is also getting replaced to be 7, and the parent will be. So what happened now? Now a first iteration is being completed. Now I am going to the second iteration. When the first iteration is completed, all the infinity values have been moved. Okay, have been removed, and now we have some arbitrary values. Now we need to do the second iteration, and likewise I need to do six iterations. Okay, so in the second iteration, I am doing the same process. I am taking a b. So again, zero plus six is less than. I'm checking whether it's less than three. So it is not less than three. It is six. So there is no change. Second edge a c. 0 plus 5 less than 3. It's a false statement, so there is no change. Again, AD, again, it's the same value. The 5 is already there, so the same value. I'm not changing anything. Again, going for BE, 3 minus 1 less than 5. So 3 minus 1 it is 2, that is less than 5. So I need to replace the value of E by 2. And I am going to give over there in the tabular column. The parent is B itself. Going to C B, which is the next edge. Three minus two, which is less than three. So we are replacing the B value to be one, and the parent is C. Next C E, three plus one four, which is less than two. So that's a false statement. So there is no change. Next edge D C, five minus two, less than three. Then we are taking the next D F. 5 minus 1 less than 4, same, so there is no change. Then 2 plus 3 is 5 less than 7, yes, it's a true statement, so we need to change the value of g at 5, so we are changing the tabular column and the parent value also. Next, we are taking the last edge, f g, 4 plus 3, 7 less than 5, so that's a bigger value, so there is no change. Now, the second iteration is also complete. And we are now going for the third iteration. 
when the iterations increase the number of changes will be decreased so ab there is no change ac there is no change ad there is no change be minus 1 plus 1 there is 0 is less than 2 so there is a change so e value of e will be changed from 2 to 0 and the parent is b again cb no change c e there is no change because the value is always less dc we don't have any change d f we don't have any change eg 0 plus 3 less than 5 as yes, we have got a better solution so 3 which is less than 5 so i need to change the value of g from 5 to 3 so again we have taken that and if g 4 plus 3 less than so it is 7 less than 3 this is a false statement and there is no change so now third when the third iteration is complete we could see that there was only two changes now coming to the next fourth iteration what we can see a b has no change a c a d b e they don't have any change c b has no change c e b e d f have no change e g has no change and f g has no change which means that but during this iteration none of the value has been changed so what does that mean even though we do another set of fifth iteration and sixth iteration the values will be remaining the same but whenever you code the program the program will be continuing for v minus one times so in a manual way we could stop over here because the table is freeze over here so from here how do we find the distance okay minimum distance so this is the way uh, after four iteration the system was stable and we could get the final table over here so i am taking i am starting from the vertex g so below the table you can see it's written g e b c d a and f d so how did you get that so consider the vertex g okay what is the parent of g it is e so g parent is e okay so that, that's how we got e now you have to go to the vertex e and check who who is the parent of e which is b now you have to go to the b and check the parent of b which is c likewise you will be getting all the vertexes if you have left out any vertex you have to check if uh, what is the parent of that vertex here f is left out so i am checking f is the f is having parent as d so i am having another branch also fd so this is the shortest path from the vertex so if you check this i can draw the shortest path like this so first path was g e b c d a and f d so this is the shortest path so this is how the bellman ford algorithm basically works i hope it is clear you just try out with the your uh, with an example and it will be very easy to solve so after the example i am moving to the next thing called negative side we have already told that bellman ford algorithm works whenever you have negative weights so what is negative cycle negative cycle means whenever you have a cycle you will be trying to find out the weight of the particular cycle so if you find out the weight over here it is 5 plus 3 plus minus 5 so the weight will be negative so minus 2 so this is a negative cycle so whenever we are having a negative cycle bellman ford algorithm is unstable let's try out with this particular example so here we have i'm having three vertices so I'm, i need to do with two iterations and i'm having three edges so in the first iteration here i am not using a tabular method you can use the tabular method because uh, i am using uh, this picture itself in order to find the distance so in the first edge is ac so when you consider ac so i have uh, initialized zero and infinity a is the source so i am starting with ac zero plus five less than infinity so i can change the infinity value of c and put it as five okay so next edge cb when i am going to cb i need to check out 5 plus 3 less than infinity that is 8 less than infinity so it is always less than infinity so i am replacing infinity by 8. next i am going to check out next vertex ba so ba 8 minus 10 less than 0 yes it is minus 2 so i am replacing 0 by minus 2. So my first iteration is over. I am going to the second iteration. The second iteration I am again starting with AC. AC is having minus 2 plus 5 which is less than 5. So I am finding out that value and replacing 5 by 3. Going to the second edge CB which is 
3 plus 3 less than 8. So, 6 is less than 8. So, I need to replace 6 by 8 by 6. 8 is got and 6. Next, I am going for B8. 6 plus minus 10, which is less than minus 2. So, it is answer is minus 4. So, I am calculating minus, I am cutting minus 2 and going for minus 4. So, all the two iterations are over. According to Bellman Ford algorithm, it is told that we need to finish the process here. But actually, is the process finished? We can check out for another one more round of iteration. Okay. So, when I go for the next iteration, AC minus 4 plus 5, which is 1, which is less than 3. So, I need to replace 3 by 1. Going for the next stage, CB, 1 plus 3 which is 4, which is less than 6. So, I am again cutting 6 and writing 4 over here. Going to the next part, BA, we have, I am having 4 and minus 10, 4 plus minus 10, which is minus 6. So, I need to replace over here. So, actually what happened, even after 3 iteration, the system is unstable. That is, even if we go for fourth iteration or fifth iteration, the value gets changed. This goes on right indefinitely. So, Bellman Ford algorithm will not be able to solve problems having negative cycle, not the negative weight, but the negative cycle. But it can be used in another way. You can use Bellman Ford algorithm in order to find out whether there is any negative cycle in the graph by checking the relaxation function. Whenever the relaxation function repeatedly changes the value, you can say that the relaxation, there is a negative cycle in the graph. So, including all these things, we can come up with the final algorithm of Bellman. So, what is the final algorithm? The, I am basically dividing the algorithm into three parts. The first part actually says what, how the initialization process is done. I am taking the source, putting it into zero, all the, all the others to be negative, the parent is initialized to null. Everything has been in the first session. The second session, I am doing the relaxation function. I am checking out the distance from a particular source to a particular um, to a particular destination and check the uh, distance vector also. If it is less than, I used to replace that. That is the second part. And the third part of the algorithm basically checks whether the graph contains negative sign. So the third part tells you about the negative sign. So this is the basic. Um, structure of Bellman for algorithm. So, once you have written the algorithm, you need to find out the complex. So, what is the complexity of that? Consider the graph has E edges. Then, it need to relax the edges for V minus 1. Then, the complexity is order of E into V minus 1. So, we can say that complexity is order of E into V. If we say that E and V are N and N respectively, then the order of the Bellman for algorithm will be order of N square. Consider the graph to be a complete graph. So, if the, there is a complete graph, the total number of edges will be n into n minus 1 by 2. And the number of vertices remains v minus 1. So, the total complexity will be the product of n into n minus 1 by 2 into v minus 1, which you can see that it will be in the order of n cube. So, you can say that the complexity of Bellman Ford algorithm in a normal case is order of n square and Whenever it's a complete graph, it is in the order of n cube. So this is about the complexity of Bellman for algorithm. So uh, this is the first example of Bell example of dynamic programming. So we started with dynamic programming. What are the basic steps that we use in order to solve almost all the dynamic programming problems? We come up with the reference relation, solve it repeatedly, and find out. And then we have taken a particular example of the algorithm which is having negative side, negative weights. Then we um, went through the example with V minus one iterations and found out the shortest form. And then we checked, we saw the disadvantage of Bellman Ford algorithm, which is whenever we are having negative cycles, even though after the particular iteration, the thing won't stop or the weights gets uh, adjusted indefinite. Okay, so the total, then after that, we came to the complexity of the algorithm. It is order of n square for normal case and for the complete graph it is order of n cube. So that's about the first part of the um, session. So coming to the, we can check out for another problem also, another optimization problem also. This problem is called optimal matrix multiplication. This optimal matrix multiplication is also an optimization problem. So what is it? What is the problem statement of optimal matrix multiplication? Consider I am having 
a sequence of metrics okay i am having 10 metrics i need to find out which is the most efficient way to multiply these metrics which means first whether i should multiply a1 to a2 or whether i should multiply a1 and a2 and a3 first so i need to find out where i need to give the parentheses in the best way so that the number of multiplications are minimized okay so before going to optimal matrix multiplication we need to know some basis of matrix multiplication okay so consider a is a matrix okay of the order 2 into 3 and b is a matrix of the order 3 into 2 okay so uh, row and column so whenever you are given two matrix first thing in order to find the product first thing what you should do you have to check whether these two metrics can be multiplied right so how do you check whether the two metrics can be multiplied the column of the first matrix and the row of the second matrix should be the same so here it is three and three so these two metrics can be multiplied so i am going to multiply the matrix and i am getting solution c as this particular thing okay so when i got the c what is the order of the resultant matrix we say two by two matrix how did you get two by two the first two is the row of a okay you can see the highlighted one and the second two is the column of b okay so you you need to know when two matrices are being multiplied what is the order of the resultant matrix okay so after knowing the order of the resultant matrix i have a doubt actually how many multiplications have i performed here? okay so i need to check how many multiplications so there is i can see a11 into b11 there is the first multiplication a12 into b21 that is the second multiplication similarly if you check that there are actually 12 different multiplications how did you get the value 12 if it was a bigger matrix it is not possible for me to count all the multiplications right so how how can you derive a formula to find the multiplication how many multiplications are there so i can get 12 as 2 into 3 into 2 so what are these values 2 and 3 and 2 the first two denotes the row of the first matrix that was being multiplied and the 3 is the common term of a and b that is the 3 and 2 is the column of the second matrix clear so that's how we got 12 so to summarize this i can say that you need to understand three things first one is when can we multiply what is the order of the resultant matrix the order of the resultant matrix will be the same as that of row needed how many multiplications are calculated by row of the first matrix into the common term into the column of the second matrix clear so these three concepts are required for doing the example problem so please uh, keep these three formulas in mind okay so going forward to an example consider that i am having four different matrices a1 a2 a3 and a4 with the order 3 2 2 4 4 2 and 2 5 okay so my actual problem was to find out how many ways or what or in what all ways i can multiply these matrices so that the number of multiplication multiplication cost is minimized so i can divide the process into different categories having matrices with length 1 matrices with length 2 length 3 and length 4 okay so what do you mean by length 1 length one means i am give i need to find the product of two matrix okay one, one matrix a and another matrix b but i am given only one matrix a so is it possible to find the product no right i if i need to find the product i need to have two matrix but when the length is one i am given only one matrix so i cannot find the uh, so the number of multiplications will be zero so now i am using a tabulation method in order to capture all the results for that i am having a four by four table where 1, 2, 3, and 4 represent the A1, A2, A3, A4. So I told that when the length is 1, the number of times, the number of multiplications by A1 and A1 will be 0. So I can give 
1 1 as 0 similarly a2 to a2 cost of multiplying a2 with a2 so i am i'm not having any multiplication over there so it is 0 3 3 is 0 and 4 4 is 0 so when the length is 1 I, the column the diagonals will be filled by 0 itself so now what we need to do i need to check for the option length equal to 2 so when length equal to 2 basically i can have some particular options i can either multiply a1 a2 together okay or i can multiply a2 a3 together or i can multiply a3 a4 together fine so that those will be the matrices that i will be multiplying first so now i need to find out the cost of multiplying a1 and a2 okay so what is the the cost for multiplying a1 and a2 just uh, remember the slide before i'm ha i had two matrices a and b so what was the cost for row of first into the common term into the column of second so whenever you are multiplying a and b what is the cost cost will be three that is the row of the first you can see the dimension of a1 was three into two three plus common term between a1 and a2 that is two and column of a2 which is 4 so 3 into 2 into 4 which is 24 that is the cost for multiplying or that is the number of multiple operations that happen when you multiply a1 with a2 so this 24 will be given to the table at the position 1 2 clear at the position 1 2 now i need to find out what is the cost when multiplying a2 with a3 so when multiplying a2 with a3 what is the cost a2 so which means the row that is 2 into the common term 4 into 3 of uh, a3 that is the column that is 2 4 into 2 into 2 which is equal to 16 and this 16 goes to which place to 3 position second row third column clear now i am going with the third one a3 into a4 what is the cost of multiplication i can again go a3 and a4 so the row of a3 4 into the common term which is 2 and the column of a4 which is 5 4 into 2 into 5 which is equal to 40 and this 40 goes to which position 3 4 to position 3 4 that is 40 clear so these are the number of cost of multiplication that we got when the length is 2 so when the length was 1 we got all 0 when the length was 2 you got 24 16 and 40 clear so what is next we have to find out when the length is 3 when the length is 3 what are the possibilities i can multiply a1 a2 a3 with a4 or i can multiply a2 a3 a4 first and to that result i can multiply k1 so these two cases we can consider as a case 1 and case 2 and we can see each one in detail so coming to the case 1 that is a1 a2 a3 is multiplied first and the product is multiplied to a4 okay so this is the case 1 so this a1 a2 a3 can be actually multiplied into two ways right how a1 a to multiply it first to that i can multiply a3 or what is the other method a1 multiplied to the product of a2 and a3 so two possibilities are there so we can explore both possibilities so uh, before that we can see what is the total cost for finding the left term that is a1 a2 into a3 that is the cost for multiplying a1 with a2 plus cost of multiplying a1 a2 with a3 right so what is the cost of multiplying a1 and a2 and we have already found out and the result is there in the table in 1 2 what is that 24 so we can directly write so now what is the cost of multiplying a1 a2 with a3 we don't we haven't found it out so we have to find it and let's say let it be x clear similarly on the right hand side cost of multiplying a1 into a2 a3 is cost of multiplying a2 with a3 plus cost of multiplying a2 a3 with a1 we already found out the cost of multiplying a2 with a3 right that is in the column 2 3 okay what is that 16 do we have the other one no we have to find out let's say x so we can say that when the length is 3 in the first case a1 a2 a3 into a4 basically has two possibilities first one is 24 plus x number of multiplications or 16 plus y number of multiplications okay so now i need to find out the value of x and y and have to add to 24 and 16 and to check what is the total cost okay so now i am going to find out so 
I told I we know that a1 into a2 into a3 and a1 into a2 into a3. So I am going for the left hand side. So what is the resultant dimension of the resultant matrix when we are multiplying a1 and a2? Okay, remember the earlier slides. Whenever you are multiplying two matrices, what is the dimension of the result? A1 and A. So row of A1, that is 3, the common term. Um, uh, resultant of the matrix, that is first row, row of first one into column of the second one. So 3 into 4. What is the dimension of A3? Dimension of A3 is given in the question 4 into 2. So now what is the cost for multiplying A1, A2 into A3? Cost for multiplication is found out by first term into the common term into the last term. That is row into common term into column of the second matrix. So 3 into 4 into 2. It is 24. So this is the value of x. So we got the value of x. So what is the total cost? 24 plus x. That is 24 plus 24. That is 48. Fine. That that's, uh, finishes the left hand side of case. Going to the right hand side. I am having a1 into a2 into a3. So what is the dimension of the resultant matrix of a a2 into A3, when A2 and A3 is multiplied, we will be getting a matrix and the dimension of the resultant matrix will be 2 into 2. Clear? Okay. Then I am having the dimension of A1. What is the dimension of A1? Even in the question, 3 into 2. So we got the dimension. So whenever I am having two matrices, how will you find out the number of multiplication steps? This row into the row into the common term into the column of the second matrix. That is 3 into 2 into 2, which is equal to 12. So it is 16 plus y. So y value I have already found out to be 12. So the total value will be 16 plus y, then 16 plus 12, that is 20. Which means when during the case 1, you have got actually two values, right? 48 and 20. What is our aim? In order to find out the, uh, find out the multiplication where we have least number of steps. So which is the least one? 28 is the least one. So 28 goes to with which part I am finding out the Multiplication from A1 to A3. So it goes to first row, third column, A1 to A3. So cost for multiplying A1 to A3 will be 28. And how did you get that 28? When I multiplied A1 into A2, A3, the right hand column. Okay. A2, A3 will be first multiplied to the result A1 is multiplied. So that is also mentioned in the table. So that's the case 1 X. Now going to the case 2. We had, we can have second case, that is. A1 is multiplied to the product of A2, A3 and A4. Here also we can have two steps. A2, A3 into A4 or A2 into A3, A4. Similarly, the cost will be A2 with A3 and the cost of multiplying A2, A3 with A4. Similarly, other ways, cost of multiplying A3 with A4 and multiplying A3, A4 with A2. Clear? But cost of multiplying A2 and A3 is already there in the table as 16. So the other one we need to find out, let it be P. So the total cost will be 16 plus P. Similarly, the second one, A3 with A4, that is already given in the table 3, 4, that is 40. And the second cost, we need to find out, let it be Q. So the total cost will be 40 plus Q. So you can say that the second case also, I'm having 16 plus P and 40 plus Q. So I need to find out the value of P and Q. So to find out the value of P and Q, what should I do? What is the resultant matrix if I may? multiply a2 with a3. So whenever I multiply a2 and a3, what is the dimension of the resultant matrix? It will be 2 into 2. And what is the dimension of a4 that is given? That is 2 into 5. So how many multiplication steps are there? Row into common term into column. That is 2 into 2 into 5. That is 20. So 20 is the p value. So the total value will be 16 plus p will be 36. Going to the right hand side, the certain dimension of A3 into A4 is 4 into 5. What is the dimension of A2? That is 2 into 4. So what is the number of multiplication steps? Row into the common term into column. So 2 into 4 into 5, which is 40. So that is the Q value. So total is 40 plus Q, which is 40 plus 40, that is 80. So in the second case, I have, have got two costs, that is 36 and 80. So which one is smaller? 36 is small. So what will happen? 36 moves to the portion 2, 4. Because I am calculating A2 to A4. The cost for multiplying from A1, A, A2 to A4. That is 36. So 36 goes there. I am also writing which method? A2 into A3 into A4. So that is the way by which you got 36. 
So what happened now? Length three is complete. Now you need to go for length equal to four. So when length is equal to four, you can have three cases. First one is a1, a2, a3 into a4, a1, a2 into a3, a4, or a1 into a2, a3, and a4. Here we can see the different cases. So a1, a2, a3 multiplied by a4. So how will you find out? Is the cost of multiplying a1 to a3 plus cost of multiplying a1, a2, a3 with a4. We already have the cost of multiplying a1 to a3. What is that cost? That is 28. The other one, let it be x. We need to find out. So how to find out the value of x? Here I am multiplying a1, a2 and a3. So what will be the resultant matrix dimension when I multiply a1 and a2? The resultant dimension will be 3 into 4. When I multiply a1, a2 with a3, the resultant matrix will be 3 into 2. Okay, so 3 into 2 and 2 into 5. So the result, what will be, will be 3 into 2 into 5. That is 30 will be the total. It is the same as which we have done before also. So we got the value of x which is equal to 30. So what is the total cost? It is 28 plus 30 which is equal to 58. So that is the total cost for case 1. Going to the case a3 into a4. Here we have basically having three multiplication. Cost of multiplying a1 to a2 that you can get from the table 1, 2. Cost of multiplying a3 and a4 that you can get from 3, 4 column. Plus cost of multiplying a1, a2 into a3, a4. Okay, so you can get two values directly from the table that is 24 and 40 and you have to multiply the dimensions 3 into 4 into 5. So you get the total cost is 124. Okay, so now I am going to the third case where I am going to multiply a1 into a2, a3, a4. So, what is the cost of multiplying a2, a3, a4 that you can directly get from the graph 2, 4, right? That is 36, 2, 4. And the product, the dimensions 3 into 2 into 5, that is 66. So, these are the cost when the length is 4. So, you can write the Whenever the length is 4, the cost has 58, 124 and 66. Among this, which is the smallest one, 58 is the smallest one, right? So, 58 goes to the tabular column. And how did you get that? A1, A2, A3 was multiplied first and to the answer, A4 was multiplied. So, I am also mentioning that in the table. Okay. So, now the tabular column has been completely finished. Now, what should I do? I need to find out what is the order in which I am going to multiply. Okay, so this is the basic tabular column. So for while getting 58, we had a1, a2, a3 need to be multiplied first, and that need to be multiplied to a4. Right. So what happened was this is the basic method by which we need to. But what how can you uh, sort a1 to a3? Check the check the column 1, 3. A1 into A2 into A3 can be bus multiplied by A1 into A2 A3. So, so I am taking that from there. A1 into A2 A3 and A4 as such over there. So finally, I can say that whenever you are having a matrix A1, A2, A3 and A4, you will be getting the least number of multiplications when you multiply A2 with A3 first, the result of A2, A3 to A1 and result of all that with A4. That is the least number of multiplications available whenever you are working with chain matrix multiplication. Clear? So this is a very simple step. So just try doing it. You will be fine. You will you will find that it's a very easy step. Okay. So if uh, we also have a general equation for finding the elements, consider a1, a2, a3, and a4 are the different matrices, and 3, 2, 2, 4, 4, 2, and 2, 5 represent the dimensions. I am giving the value d0, d1, d2, d3 and d4 in order to represent the dimension. Okay. So I can write a generalized equation like cij equal to minimum of c of ik plus c k plus 1 into j plus d i minus 1 into dk into dj. Where the value of k will be between i and j will not be equal to j but it will be equal to i. So this is a general equation. If you understand how to do the problem, then there is no need to find out the particular equation. So you can just find out an example also. 
y a1, a2, a3 and a4. So consider you need to find c of 2, 3. So i value will be 2, j value will be 3, right? What will be the value of k? k will be 2 because k's value can be i's value but can but should be less than j's value. So k value will also be 2. So if you represent this c 2 3 equal to minimum of i k. i and k are 2 and 2 plus k plus 1. k is 1 so k plus 1 is k is 2 so k plus 1 is 3 j is 3 and d i minus 1 i minus 1 is d1 d k is d2 d j is d3. You know that the Diagonal elements were 0, right? 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, 1 were 0, 0, 0. So that is 0 plus 0. And the dimension d1 into d2 into d3. So you can see d1 was 2, d2 was 4, and d3 was 2. So we got 16. Was this the same answer that we got while we done in the previous problem? Yes. This is the same result that we got there also. So you can either go with the general equation or you can go in the normal manual method. So whenever you are going in the equation method first thing that you have, have to find out is you have to go with the uh, go from 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 then 1 2 2 3 3 4 then 1 4 okay because we told that dynamic programming works only if we have some uh, partial solution or if we have some solution that are overlapping so here one solution to another one is overlap with the previous So this is we do the particular change matrix multiplication. So this is the basic algorithm of chain multiplication. So we will be defining the table in order to fill the uh, number of cost. The diagonal elements will be zero and we'll be only uh, writing the uh, filling up the columns above the diagonal. So the process is continued until all the values are filled and we'll be getting the least multiplication cost. So this is the algorithm. So what is the cost of the algorithm? We are generating n into n minus 1 by 2 elements. Okay. How did you get n into n minus 1 by 2? Because we are only filling the elements which are above the diagonal. And also the diagonal elements are zero. So it is n into n minus 1 by 2 elements. And the time taken to generate the matrix is n. So if it is n into n minus 1 by 2 and the time is n, you can directly multiply. So the total time complexity will be n into n minus 1 by 2 into n, which is n2. So that is the time complexity of the particular algorithm. So uh, we can just summarize what all things we have studied till now. We have started with dynamic programming. What are the basic, what are the basic um, concepts that you need to know? Starting from optimality, principle of optimality, then we uh, came to Bellman Ford algorithm. What are the ways by which we can do a basic example of Bellman Ford? Um, this is different from Digixtra because it has Bellman Ford is able to do the problems even if there is negative weights. Then we came to the disadvantage of Bellman Ford algorithm, which means where whenever there is a negative cycle, we will not be able to do it. Okay, then we came to complexity of Bellman Ford, order of n square. And for the complete graph will be order of n q. Then we started the second second uh, example of matrix multiplication. The basic concepts that you need to know that is what is the order of the resultant matrix when when you can multiply two matrix and what is the number of multiplication steps. Then you came to an example. You found out the length one two two three and four. Found out the different possibilities of combinations and took the least multiplication cost and populated in the particular multiplication that table that we have made and we have got the least one. Then we came to the algorithm of um, matrix multiplication and finally to the complex. So hope the session has helped you and this will help you in uh, preparing for your exams. So if you have any doubts, uh, I will be able to clarify now. So, Sir. Thank you for your personal patience. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, there are a few questions raised by students. Shall we move on to the Q and A session? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Sir, uh, uh, the first question is: Is there any particular reason? 
like uh, is there any particular reason for putting an infinity at the start of each vertex and distance uh, uh, we are basically finding out the distance from the source okay so we need to find out what is the distance from the source to each each vertex right so initially we are not uh, no we don't know what is the initial so we, so initially we don't know what is the basic distance okay from the source there will be multiple ways by which you can reach c it can be through b can be through d it can be through e so i am not sure what is the uh, basic distance so in order to in order to uh, till we find out the for finding out the basic distance we first give it as infinity and then we will be uh, going forward with the calculation and finding out the value thank you sir so the second question is how negative weights can come in the transportation problem can you give any real world example for it yeah uh, the, the negative weights basically are uh, for transportation problem okay um, maybe not because we are dealing with distance right but there are optimization problems where uh, whenever we consider some uh, say nature inspired algorithms and all whenever we have algorithms like that there will be possibility of having relative weights uh, come to the case of reinforcement learning so whenever you are having a particular answer you will be backing up with a positive weight whenever you are having a um, uh, say a difference of opinion though we will be giving a negative weight so it's a basically a reward and punishment scheme so in such cases the negative weights will also be uh, taken hello uh, am i audible one more question sir yeah, which sure. following as the highest storage and time complexity dot product or cross product uh sorry i didn't get you so which has the high storage and time complexity okay dot product or cross product okay uh, here in this problem um, in, in the case of a dynamic uh, programming situation we are not, not uh, basically doing a cross product so we are just taking the multiplication okay so here in this particular situation we are just taking the normal multiplication so it will be directly uh, similar to the normal mathematical multiplication itself because uh, just uh, remember the case of matrix multiplication okay what was the time complexity of matrix multiplication it was we had three loops i loop j loop and k loop so it was order of n into n into n that is n cube so the same method you have got in chained matrix multiplication also right so uh, that is the way by which the uh, matrix multiplication happens and the normal multiplication is having the, the uh, normal complexity in the exam point of view okay how do the students uh, study the algorithm sir how do the questions okay. come can you explain yeah, sure. uh, normally uh, in bellman ford algorithm the uh, uh, question will be given like you will be given a particular graph okay and you will be uh, uh, asked to find out the shortest path or um, there will be short questions on writing what is the basic algorithm of bellman ford or what is the time complexity or how did you get the time complexity of uh, algorithms so that is the normal question that can be come uh, that can come from bellman ford so uh, in the case of a dynamic programming what do you mean by dynamic pro programming what is the uh, optimality principle of that what do you mean by optimality principle so uh, uh, problems like that can be coming in dynamic programming. coming to chain matrix multiplication you will be given say two or three matrices and you will be uh, asked to find out what is the least um, cost of multiplying these three particular matrices so where do you put the parenthesis so this is uh, parenthesis method so those are the normal questions asked for the you know so, so if you refer the previous question papers also you can see that bellman ford algorithm after has been asked principle of optimality has been asked uh, four matrices has been given and to find out the least uh, the least number of multiplications that has also been asked in the Uh, the, that would be the last question. Uh, we are coming to the end of the session, sir. Thank you so much for coming uh, to help our students during this crisis time. And dear students, thank you so much for watching this session. In case you are having any doubts, you can uh, raise your questions in the Q&A. We will answer it in the offline mode. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, students. Have a nice day. Thank you.